It is worth resolved that you must focus the energy of intended to bring in forth this phase of the project. There is indeed a nuance of difference in these. One can intend to do something, but never actually do it. Resolve is the spark that holds the intent of the forefront of the field of activity within your awareness. This phase referred to what might be called the second layer of activity towards the initiation of the project. The phase of getting the word out does not cease because a new phase has begun. One simply adds the beginning of the next phase in the layering sense. Phase one was something like the foundation of a pyramid. Now we're beginning the second layer of the construction before the first layer is complete. Visualize how graphics complete a picture on the computer. It begins and does not always complete the picture in total horizontal motion one line at a time and the picture at some point complete. Next, consider this in a holographic focus for the planet. In your mind's eye, you can see where the information has gone and paint in the areas where the information has been sent. If you see the planet as dark and information painted as in lighted areas, you can begin to see the picture. You can see the sprinkles of light spreading outward. Even people who have heard and consciously rejected the information reflect a degree of light, and it remains waiting to be fully reflected. It is because you cannot know how many of these there are that you have difficulty in grasping the magnitude of the accomplishment that this phase has reached and continues to expand. The hundredth monkey point is very close indeed. Portions of phase two are already in motion and momentum will expand it much more quickly than phase one. Because of this awareness brought forth by phase one, there are many that are waiting and wondering what it is that they can do now that they are aware. We shall provide that answer and it will seem to me then an easy thing to do for they are being asked to do something that can be done privately and without drawing any notice. And it is the most powerful thing that needs to be done. It's a focused, pivotal change of attitude from victim to empowerment. The great resistance to phase one information was because each thought it would involve armed revolution to accomplish the change. We know that a change is not our goal. A new paradigm of experience begins with totally different techniques and methods, and there is no countermeasure in a place once it had begun. It can be countered only with reactive measures or with big deviations within the negative plan. This would bring forth chaos within that focus. The negative plan is to counter the flow of creative energy within it exists. It requires continuity and narrowly defines focus that links together. This is absolutely essential. It is with joy that we share these segments of information so that you may begin to understand more than just the nature of the negative plans, but also to understand the weak links available within their plans as opportunities. We can continue to guide you as how to gnaw away at these links as long as we are asked. Please remember to do this. To receive and follow through is of a critical importance, but do remember to ask. Your appreciation is warmly received and your follow through is applauded with zeal at many levels. However, the key is always to use your free will to choose. There is a children's song used to teach the letters of your alphabet. The alphabet is the foundation of the written words in your language. What we desire you to learn to use is what the foundation of manifested self-awareness. Just as you must learn to apply the alphabet to written language in combinations of sound to speak the language, you must use the principles that form the foundation for directing the flow of thought into the coagulated energy that creates what is experienced as life. It is the utilization of the potentiality underlying all that is known at every level. This is accomplished through a process mentioned before and is reflected at the very basis of your ability to remain in your earthly form, breathing. In a simple format, it is drawn to the expansion of the lungs, rest, contraction of the lungs, rest and repeat. The lung is the vehicle of containment and motion. It, in turn, is contained within the totality of a greater consciousness awareness vehicle, the body. This is a pattern matrix that is repeated in endless variety. The stumbling block is to learn to appreciate this variety each time is encountered and remember that it is but a unique manifestation of the basic pattern matrix. This difficulty is especially true if there's distortion in the particular expressions encountered through experience. The more confrontational of the experience, the more distortion is occurring, not in just one, but in both individuals. Distortion, unfortunately, ripples outward and encompasses groups of interacting individuals. When the interactive distortion becomes large enough, 
Then in order to correct the distortion, a large number of those involved must return to the relearning and application of the basic fundamentals of manifested experience. Simply stated, they must relearn and apply the universal laws. Guess where your planetary inhabitants are. Fortunately, you have at your disposal communications with a high potentiality of reaching fast numbers, at least at the moment. Mounting pressures of multiple layers of oppression are creating tension within those that can be reached, and yet there are many ways of reaching them. A hundred years ago, this would not have been possible, even though there were fewer to reach. These communication possibilities have been named mass media for good reason. There's no reason why these cannot be utilized for a reason contrary to which is originally intended. Perhaps there was even help in bringing them into such widespread use. Could be. Guidance in many areas is available upon request. Where are your requisitions? The length of these daily messages depends on how much information can be received and assimilated, and in conciseness of the message format. Clarity and conciseness are the goals with enough repetition to assure that the information is planted in fertile ground. If not, then another approach is used. For the greater part of human consciousness, the substitution of a new focus within their awareness is all that's necessary. For others of you, much more is involved. You have committed to physical action and the conception and dissemination of this new focus. After all, Someone has to plant the seeds of thought that comprise the foundation of this new paradigm before they can begin to grow, mature, and receive themselves. If you are reading this information or are hearing it, then you are chosen. Now the ball is in your court, and you will choose to be chosen or not. It's your free will decision. Our blessings are given as you process the information and provide it to others for their consideration. In your vernacular, hang in there. The roller coaster ride is just beginning. You have not even gotten to the exciting points. Just know you are strapped in and the ride will end. However, I doubt you will wish it would last it longer. Not this time. The focus of these messages has been toward the dissemination of information that concerns the expansion of your understanding with regard to plans and appropriate attitudes and actions within the group areas. There has been little information with regard to your personal experiences and application in that area. This was not to indicate that this area is of little importance. New Age information, better called New Thought, which could be categorized even more accurately as Remembered Thought, emphasizes the need to be balanced and chance be in the now. In actuality, that's correct. As previously pointed out, all of the cycles within the cosmos galaxy move toward and away from the center point of stillness or perfect balance. In order for the galaxy to be in balance, the cycles are moving within the balance of those moving away and those returning to each balance point. You could picture it as a gyroscope spinning and moving around a central gyroscope that remains in perfect balance and put forth an energy pattern that holds all the smaller gyroscopes within its sphere of influence. Each gyroscope outside the central focus contains within it myriad of smaller gyroscopes. In order for this entire system to continue in existence, there must be quality of energetic motion. If one gyroscope gets far enough out of balance to approach a point beyond its ability to return, then counterbalancing must take place within the whole system with the focus of holding it within the range of safety. This is, of course, an oversimplified picture, but to give you some understanding, it allows you to picture Earth at its tilt of 23 degrees approaching a point of losing its ability to return to balance. Consider that within the gyroscopic picture of Earth, there are six billion tiny gyroscopes each spinning on their own axis. The balance of these influences the balance of the larger one. If most of these are out of balance, then of course the larger ones cannot remain in balance. Grasping this picture leads you to understand that the fourth universal law is that of balance. One pattern of thought that holds the powerful influence in the balance or imbalance of personal expression is that of past, present, and future. Since all are necessary for various reasons of survival and progress, they are embedded within the ego observer mode. Remember the burn and do not touch the stove again. You desire to build a larger house for your family so you can visit the steps your future must contain in order to track that experience, and so you migrate between the two. However, there is the moment of now that you experience that is neither past nor future. That is your balance point. That is your place of rest. You return there during each sleep cycle. There was a time as the planet revolved in the cycle of light and darkness when all were active or resting in unison, 
which brought greater balance to the whole. With the advent of artificial lighting, this balancing pattern is no longer present. Mankind now has constant activity, first with the industrial age, now in the technologic age. Even within the homes of the hours of rest within a family are buried. A balancing technique is practiced in what you call the Far East and it's called meditation. The New Age group quickly adopted it. Techniques are often distorted and the conscious awareness is overwhelmed with media clutter and unable to find the still point of balance within the combination of conscious and subconscious. Entering that still point allows for connections with the soul and balance to be reached for at least a short time. Balance is reached through the understanding and practice of the three basic laws of the universe, law of attraction, law of deliberate creation or intent, and allowance. If you review the previous messages, you will find within the information suggestions for resolving this problematic situation of the population of Earth. In order to live the new paradigm of experience, those participating will be required to focus within their present time. Only the framework will be known and it must be fleshed out through living it into existence. Experience by experience, this will require living within present moment reality. Within this focus group experience, balance will be attained. The past cannot be applied and the future will be unknown. That will leave only the present. Let us consider the galactic cycle completion. It is only a momentary instant that is available to accomplish a grand accession or a ghastly dimensional crash. That depends. Again, we return to your fixation of experience major blocks of the sequential events. Experience within what you call the present moment is a misnomer an inapplicable designation. When you are focused into what you are thinking or doing with no awareness of any other activity, you lose track of time. Each of you have experienced that. Only by looking at your time tracking device called a clock, do you have any idea of what time might be other than the presence or absence of sunlight? If each of you were totally intrigued with what you were doing, that was your only required focus and there were no seasons to concern you, would you care what day it was? If that intriguing subject opened the door to another and another, would you care what day or time it was? I doubt it. If you were in balance, would sleep be necessary? What about food? What about recreation pursuits? Aren't these necessities really just a search for balance? This is not suggesting that you become Ratharians. These are simple ideas to intrigue your imaginations. Your experiences are so far out of intended balance that it is difficult for you to imagine what balance during wakeful experience is like in the third dimensional format. It's far more pleasant than you know. No wonder you desire to leave this dimension thinking that respite is only to be found elsewhere. Without balance of the third dimensional experience, you cannot exist in higher dimensions in your body format and current self-awareness. First, you must become into balance. Because you are all interconnected, individuals have insurmountable problems maintaining balance, even if it is achieved. It's necessary to bring a large number into balance to accomplish what is necessary in the bigger picture. The Bible warns you not to place pearls of wisdom before those who have no viable connection to the source of life. It's time to strike that idea from the books. It is time to do another 180 degree turn and do it in the practical, applicable terminology. The pattern had always been to hide it within religious and esoteric terminology so that only a few were privy to the information, lest it be lost through individual interpretations that might destroy it. Without written words, or few were literate, allegorical stories were the only method of disseminating even basic understandings. These contained references to activities and other commonly known and understood references that were within that local cultural environment. Even these basic understandings became distorted when the stories were retold in cultural situations that had no reference point to the original understandings. We find ourselves of necessity reintroducing the basics. A good place to begin, a new beginning, don't you agree? Attraction, intention, and allowance, leading to balance through application within experience. A doctrine in these positively leads to ascension to a higher dimensions. Welcome to the Ascending Team. We are entering the period of time that leads to the beginning of the shift of energies that will begin the days of tribulation. Unfortunately, some of the predictions that have been made reflecting the plans of the dark side will manifest. So they seem to indicate that the situation is irreversible, it certainly is not. This will be a time where it will be critical for those of you who are privy to the behind the scenes maneuvers 
of which you are part, hold faithfully to the understanding and belief that they do indeed exist and are positively laying the foundation for the new paradigm. This new pattern and the experience can be pictures of the shimmering castle coming forth amidst a scene of frantic, confused activity. It is at first very dimly seen. Though this is hardly the pattern which is the new paradigm will resemble, it is indeed draws on the Camelot myth as a recognizable fantasy, containing within it desirable dreamlike ideals. It's a process of it rising through the mist of focused imagination in the midst of what appears to be reality. This is the understanding that we desire to trigger. If you are not a Camelot buff, then choose some other picture. The Phoenix, perhaps, but choose for it to be transformed and to rise before the ashes stage. We would emphasize the recognition that the desirable already is manifesting before the undesirable has disintegrated. The focus of even a few with belief and knowingness that it does indeed exist and is coming forth is of a critical importance. By choosing different pictures, but the same focus, then the process is held in place until the purpose is defined and becomes the ideal. Defining the purpose will not be an easy process. Many versions will be proposed before the ideal wording can encompass it. This is meant to encourage ones to begin, for the first step must be taken so that progress can be made toward the goal of bringing it forth. It is the brevity and universal appeal of it within the diversity of six billion beings that is the key. Though it seems impossible, we assure you that it is possible. We remind you to ask for guidance and help at these sessions. Egos must be in their own observer of states, for the credit of writing will go to no one individual. It's the desire that it comes forth in perfection that must be the motivation. It shall stand alone in its purpose of encompassing the focus present on earth into a focus of expression, into greater experience. Again, we remind you of the breathing process. It will be taken in by the conscious awareness, contemplated and expressed outward through desire for its manifestation into each personal reality and held dearly while it happens. We wish it were other than a lifetime for drowning beings, but that is the experience we have created. It is through an approach encompassing universality of scope that the encompassing appeal shall be addressed. The focus on this aspect will begin to draw the feeling of oneness to the beings on the planet. A realization will begin to draw on that all are facing the same dilemma. As the itchy feeling that something ominous is present continues to intensify, this feeling keys understanding that the causes of it are beyond local, regional, or national scope. The oppression is being felt with greater intensity. What about the indigenous people? As we have mentioned before, they already know. Their shamans have given the message and they are aware that a new paradigm is being born. They are steps ahead of you and are already at work on its expression. Their people are aware and already in harmony with the process. Do not be concerned for them. Survival is their way of life. You may find yourself wishing you had incarnated into a more indigenous way of life in the days ahead. I did say may. Inasmuch as all has incarnated from the same source, you are indeed connected and do communicate at subtle levels. The mass consciousness, the awareness, is malleable through coercion, but always certain levels of it remain connected to the source. It's through these connections that we can achieve subtle changes that will lay the groundwork for future shifts at the conscious level. The oppressors must work with the levels of the mind while it might be said that we have available the levels of the heart. The heart feels. A feeling can transform the beliefs held by the mind. When the feeling vibrates within the being at a certain level, it overrides the belief and the being simply tosses it out and follows the feelings to a new conclusion. The feeling of oppression is soon to override the insistence of the mind that all is well, and the Big Brother government will work things out for the benefit of all. The magician is about to lose its veil of darkness, to be seen in the full light of recognition, and it may not be at the time of its choosing. Inasmuch as you live within time as your controlling focus, we must deal with it. The sequence of linking, interfacing action and events now enters a phase of critical importance. It's important that each of you feel the inspiration, the divine urge, to push ahead with this project. The dominoes are in place, and it will take but a nudge for them to begin their sequential trip. The placement of the final few must be preempted in order that the dark plan is unable to be carried into its planned conclusion. If a critical few can be removed, then the planned sequence will go awry and glorious confusion will result. 
the perfect time for the new paradigm to rise amid that confusion. Its conception must, however, have been completed and the birthing process well underway at the subtle levels. It is difficult for the information contained in these messages to stress the importance of various facets without becoming repetitive. We are also aware that some are reading or listening that have not had access to prior information. Thus we are attempting to make them at least somewhat inclusive. The window of time available to complete the second phase that is focused towards the completion of the word with purpose is continually shrinking. Therefore, we feel it necessary to continue to prod and poke, lest it close without its completion. Chaos would then indeed reign, and the birthing of the new paradigm could be unmanageably difficult. The period of chaos could stretch on for a painfully long time in your counting. It's not this information that is important. It's conception and completion of the writing of the purpose. We do not want this information on file in your Library of Congress. We prefer it to be exchanged on a personal need-to-known level. It's purposely written so as to exclude words that trip the communication scanner so that may be yet spread easily to the chosen ones. We wish to be very clear about this. Our translators spend much time in the thesaurus mode looking for synonyms so word patterns are varied within each document. What appears to be but a few paragraphs involves much dedicated attention to this facet of caution. The purpose of this information weighs heavily on the conscious awareness. However, commitment carries process forward day by day. We are finding that commitment matched in like manner by the readers of it are grateful indeed. It is your resolve to bring this new archetype of experience into being that holds the progress made in place so the building of the pattern can continue. Visualize the pattern of a snowflake, only now beginning to crystallize from a drop of water. Just the very beginning of one corner of what might be the unique picture is happening. You are not only watching the creation of something uniquely beautiful, you are providing the focus that will cause it to happen. How could you avoid continuing to be an important part of this beautiful demonstration? When the time arrives for what could be termed the crash of all your systems of communications, utilities, and supplies, there will be turmoil and confusion of massive proportions. It behooves you who are well aware of this possibility to survey your personal situations and to make contingency plans. It's amazing to us that this information is known, but each assumes that it will happen around them, but not to them. You are aware of the existence of various mechanisms that would provide at least minimum replacements for your utility needs. Even coordinated systems are available. The project will not make the shift in consciousness before this breakdown of current lifestyle. There will be a period of chaos. How long that will last depends on the completion of phases two and three, the conception of the new paradigm and then the spread of it through conscious awareness of your brethren. As you can deduce for yourself, communications are relatively easy before the breakdown and difficult at best after it. It is critical that you realize and begin preparing for this advanced menace for which as much focus and dispatch as possible. We are long past that I can hardly wait for it, but I don't have time to prepare for it just yet. Syndrome. It is necessary for you to look carefully at your priorities and remember that you have made commitments that involve the survival and transcendence of as many of your willing brethren as possible. This does mean that they have to be occupying their bodies for this to be successful. This is indeed a heavy responsibility. We again remind you that all possible help is available if you ask and move your feet. It would appear that it is necessary to also remind you that the discussions of phase two must be conducted in places that are not likely to contain listening wires. It is suggested that you view the movie called Enemy of the State and listen carefully when the character Brill describes the capability of the electronics. He goes through the list at top speed, and so you must be listening carefully. It was also given on TV when filming the process of the movie was reviewed. Brill in the movie reminds the hero that the capability is listening were available many years previously. However, the capability to apply them in massive manner was not possible until recently. But the added sophistication since exceed what is demonstrated in the movie. All of you are being observed, and when you gather, you can be sure your discussions are of interest. We would prefer that this project continue unknown as for as long as possible. If this sounds melodramatic, so be it. As for discernment, and then view the movie and you will understand. 
As our arrogant planners flaunt their mythology before your eyes, assuming the sleeping minds have little discernment between programming and entertainment, there's no reason we cannot use this information to our advantage. When you ask for discernment within our purposes, the ability to interpret and envision ways of applying the laws given you will provide avenues avoiding their entrapment and techniques. As all-encompassing as they appear, they are inventions of opposite focus and thus contain the elements of self-destruction. Just as divine purpose contains within it the impulse for self-expansion, the opposite contains the tendencies of self-destruction. When the negative polarity is expanded, then its innate tendencies are magnified, just as the opposite is true within the positive polarity. It is within the path between the two that the spiral of evolution exists. It is important to note here that the meaning of the word evolution has been purposely distorted by implanting the idea that evolution and adaptation are synonymous. Animal life and even human life at one level adapts. Evolution refers to the spiral of spiritual experience through, think holographically, its return, trip to the source. Here you can see a correlation of spiral to spirit and holographic to holy. When the appropriate moments arrive, you will have the discernment to bring forward into your conscious awareness a prickly feeling that causes you to move to a more appropriate place, and it will be available. Planning ahead does not work. It's necessary to be flexible and move in the moment. It's spontaneity that provides atmosphere in which creation moves without restriction. Since creation is what you are about, then it is important to move within the framework of purpose as spontaneously as possible. So it would seem that opposites are at counterpoints. Indeed, this is combining the polarities in a complementary fashion, allowing for the spiraling effect that is desired for movement in a balanced fashion. Polarities are not limited to extreme opposites as in black and white, on or off, good and bad. Pink and gray are opposites, but of different intensity. These intensities are available in abundance to apply, and though this principle, diversity within a focus is accomplished. How does this apply to the project at hand? It's through the diverse contributions toward the goal of completing phase two that the appropriate composite will come forth. Each session will be a think tank of spiraling ideas toward the goal fueled by combining the individual minds into an empowered group focus. It is the addition of the group focus that gives the increased power of the creative presence. Because the creator is not a personal presence at the third dimensional level, he cannot be literally present. But the combination of focus provided by the shared common goal brings forth a greater power, particularly when numerical combinations are observed. The common language of creation is mathematical formulation. The practice of numerology touches upon how these formulations apply to individual lives. Spontaneity is allowing the conscious awareness to relax so that harmony with these foundations of existence will bring forth the desired results within the framework of the defined purpose. The purpose of these think tank sessions provides a framework to bring forth a greater purpose that in turn will be the framework for the new paradigm. It will be the framework to provide the individuals to continue the process within their own experience. This may seem simple enough, however the strategy, it is the understanding and the follow through of the steps within the universal laws. Allowance is the most difficult to incorporate. The rising above the need to control is the leavening of the loaf, so to speak. Volumes could be written regarding this, but it would not change anything. It is in the doing that it is accomplished. It is the doing of this one facet opens the door to the transcendence of this dimension. The ability to apply this principle is built upon the use of previous two and through the application of all three. The force is reached and bingo, you are there at the point of choice, to go or not to go. Graduation requires a release of attachments, then not now. Just as you have been misled regarding your ego, so have you been misled regarding the attachments. There is a difference between attachments and addictions. That is for you to discern, and now is the time to release the addictions. You must ask yourself what it is that you think must remain in your experience, and would it be pleasant to have, but not absolutely necessary. You will be surprised if you take a few moments to make even a brief list of your technological wonders and contemplate what life would be like without them. You will then be prepared for your not-too-distant future. This is not to say that the plan to provide for the basic necessities of addiction rather than wisdom. Here again we ask for discernment. 
We remind you that it is our concern for all that motivates us to share as much guidance as possible, for this project is of critical importance. The Creator is non-preferential in the desire to retain every fragment. We, however, value our ground team greatly. Friendship is a wonderful part of the shared experience of self-aware manifestation fragments. You don't remember us, but we remember you. The days are now upon us for gathering the focus that will bring upon the transformation of the mass consciousness. It will be an interesting process of interlinking various consciously begun projects at different places on the planet. There are more than one ground crew with purposeful assignments. While it is natural to feel that one person or one group is attempting is too little, too late, this is not the case. All are now in place or nearly enough so that the concerted beginning can be initiated. It is necessary that the resolve, intent, and purpose be held securely within the scope of each of you, as the days ahead may become discouraging. You must hold your commitment with a calm and trust that does not waver. This experience is a manifested reality that must be dealt with inside that reality. The game must be continued on until completion. It can no longer be changed or delayed. Humanity is sinking into greater fear and confusing, furthering the plans of the manipulators at a rapid pace. The spiritual levels of each are becoming more and more inaccessible, and the reaction of the spirit expressing through the body to this process will continue to reflect through the reaction of the planet also. It's not a pretty picture from our perspective. It is not our intent to focus your attention into this picture, but it is also necessary that you are aware of what you are working within. It is unfortunate that it has had to proceed this far into the levels of suffering before the consciousness becomes vulnerable and desperate enough to pause and reflect that enough's enough. Perhaps now enough can be reached with the desire to bring the situation to the end to be willing to accomplish it through a total change of ingrained habitual reactions. The locking mechanism has been, has been called the opium of religion. The religious doctrine of ours is the only way and all else is wrong has literally created cells within the dungeon of ignorance with every modern religious sect present and accounted for. This is not to say that some truth is not present within them, for there is not enough either within any one of them, or even a composite of the truth known within all of them, now to guide mankind in anything but unending circles of frustration. The innate desire is always within each to progress towards the goal of transcending this entrapment and within the third dimension, and now religion offers no way to continue the journey. The aspiration of each soul extension as it incarnates on earth is to assist in bringing this situation back into balance. Each desires to become part of the pivotal pebble in the palm, but instead is caught in the entrapment of the heavy oppressive pattern of energies and become part of the chorus calling out for assistance. The assistance cannot come from without, it must come from within, through self-empowerment, not for the purpose of placing the self over and above others, but in the genuine desire to inspire others to follow suit. In this way, these individuals come into harmony with the creative flow, and with the focused conscious desire of those who are dedicated to this purpose, that it accomplished this transcendence before. Unfortunately, the situation has reached such a sad state that dedicated ones of higher dimensions have now volunteered to incarnate and act on behalf of the inhabitants and set into motion a wave of self-empowerment on the planet. These volunteers are numerous and await the triggers planted within their awareness to remember their roles. The time has come for this to begin. Now is the time for those self-appointed ones leading mankind from being to becoming what was intended. Human being is a misnomer, each is a human becoming. Knowing this and referring to themselves in this way, each would be constantly focused upon the true purpose of incarnation. Then the internal cry of those on the planet and the planet herself in this moment of time would become, I am a human, a God-man, becoming. Help me do this. Then response is possible. If changes of focus from I am the victim, help me, which implies help me to continue being a victim to a focus of desire for self-empowerment. After centuries of calling for someone or some ritual or miracle to accomplish the impossible, man has been unable to figure out that it must come from within his own awareness and the empowering of himself so that it can be accomplished. Instead of the self-empowerment urge was distorted into self-aggrandizement and the result is seen all around you. 
The shift of your own consciousness towards your desire for this end has brought forth your ability to attract these messages as the wake-up triggers are tripped. The ripples of the pebbles shall become waves. Then the action shall begin and many levels of links shall form and the wheels shall begin to turn. A beleaguered mass consciousness shall experience the shift, as will the planet. This will not be the shift, but will be the beginning of the necessary upliftment that must precede that process. Keep in mind the vibratory level of the mass consciousness. No inhabitants of planet Earth could survive a shift of the fourth dimension at this time. No amount of meditating and listening to channeled entities has accomplished this feat. It must be a shift in self-perception and the focus of this purpose of this incarnation in great numbers to accomplish this, as the flow now is downward in the vibratory rate into disease and death. To halt this movement and change its direction will require a shift of major proportions. The normal vibratory rate of the human body has been determined to be between 62 and 68 megahertz. The brain functions optimally between 72 and 90 megahertz. When the body vibration lowers to 58 megahertz, it can catch a cold. At 57 megahertz, the flu. At 55 megahertz, candida. 52 megahertz, Epstein-Barr. 42 megahertz, cancer. And at 25 megahertz, death begins. By considering the health problems of your friends and family, you can begin to get a true picture. Our interesting negative planners simply lower the megahertz of someone they would like to eliminate through their recently devised methods. Within a short period of time, the body either develops a fatal disease or if lowered enough, death occurs and whatever disease already present is the excuse. Allopathic medicine, a misnomer, chemical prescriptions lower the megahertz of the body. Radiation from TV and computer screens lower the megahertz. And consuming processed and canned foods, which have zero megahertz to support the body, continue the process. Starvation is the least subtle of the ways to lower the megahertz and brings on the lowering of the mass consciousness before each dies. In that way, these make contribution to the descending cycle. The human body has amazing adaptive abilities, but the onslaught of ways to bring down the vibratory level to tie you to the planet has reached critical point. The good news is that the shift in focus of the purpose by the critical mass within the encompassing planetary consciousness can go beyond removing a few critical dominoes as placed by the interesting planners. It could reverse the way they fall, thereby releasing the lowering process and allowing the megahertz of the bodies to increase. Now that's an interesting supposition to consider. The picture as it is at the moment is beyond discouraging. It is appalling. However, in playing out various scenarios and the holographic possibility, it is not at all hopeless. The key lies in the cards held by the ground crew. How these are played will determine which of the scenarios are available to ensure success. Keep playing. The last game has just begun and the creator never gambles. He only plays with sure bets. After all, he made up the game and he never gets the rules. You can rely on that. His turn to shuffle and the deal is about to come up. Don't wait for it to happen elsewhere. Be here now. At the point in your timing when this project was initiated, there was a very small window in which to begin the process. Once the idea was grasped and acted upon, the next window encompassing moved into the process was much larger. This stuff allowed for the contact of various new individuals to be made aware and continuing the enlarging of the window. The addition of other minds grasping the basic idea and focus on their intention of participating has continued opening the window to allow for the continued inclusion of additional participants. The expansiveness of the movement allows the process to come into harmony with the expression of divine order, which is expansive in its very nature. The momentum of the outward movement of this information forms the basis for continuing this harmonious flow and ensures the divine participation is essential to success. It is important that you realize that the key to success is in the expansive outward movement. It is a combination of grasping the various aspects of this intended change of attitude and focusing it through the needed number of points of individual awareness. The importance of these aspects is the establishment of an outward flow and maintaining this flow. New contacts must be made by as many of the recently contacted individuals as possible to keep this expansive flow in motion. As memories are key to think of other appropriate people not yet contacted, then one can continue to make additional contacts. This ensures that those without commitment to carry the letter to Garcia do not impede this essential outward expansion. 
If these messages were to be sent out to new contacts that are considered to be ones sure to follow through and actually continue the flow, it would perhaps be appropriate to send the first few as an introductory packet. A cover note suggesting that if theirs is a real commitment, then on request more of the messages will be provided. This would allow a spread of the cost for the reproduction and mailing so it would not be burdensome to a few. Each committed one would have also, in all probability, make only a few appropriate contacts. This also allows for anonymity and protection. It is assumed that only those known and deemed appropriate would be contacted so that discussions would be carried on in the groups of threes, sevens, and twelves. This is again to remind you of the numerical power available within divine mathematical order. It's entirely appropriate that attempts to formulate a possible statement of purpose should be made at small group levels. The more of these attempts that are made, the sooner the perfect one will stand forth. When that happens, that group will be totally aware that completion has been accomplished for that phase. What to do next will also be drawn into that group awareness, attracted by the power of the fusion of all the input from the totality of the groups. Here again, you are reminded that thought thinks within and upon itself when it is in divine harmony. How many participants are necessary for this parenting phase? Depends on three factors. Who, how quickly the phase is initiated, and the productive discussions actually taking place. The ball's in your court. Responses in terms beyond intellectualizing the shift in perception are the keys. We can participate further when you return the ball to our court. In the meantime, we are limited in this project to the flow of information and encouragement. The overview from our perspective is somewhat encouraging. The plans of the interesting participants of opposite purpose continue right on schedule. It's not important that the view from our focus is one of action and not reaction. It is the ability of our group to have a balanced dual perspective that spreads with the awareness of our project. This will sustain the momentum. There must be an awareness of the awesome inevitability of the probable success of their plan and a balancing awareness that is ours, the only shift available that offers the power to bring release from the intended horrendous future. If followed with dedication and resolve through application of the universal laws of attraction, focused intention to create a new paradigm of experience, and allowance to the lack of resistance, return to balance and harmony must be the end result. Only through this format can the help so ardently sought by suffering humanity be provided. All of the above discussion of bringing others into the awareness of the possibility of creating a new paradigm of experience for this planetary focus, when simply stated, is that the return to personal responsibility is the only avenue leading to success. As individuals assume responsibility, group responsibility through cooperation is the inevitable result. Those unable to move beyond the desire for personal material gain and the need to control the proceedings and outcome will soon drop by the wayside. If discernment is used in choosing appropriate contacts, those may be considered but not contacted. If at first appropriate names do not come into your awareness, as you continue to desire to participate, names and coincidental contacts will happen. The law of attraction works. Just hold the desire in your consciousness, especially at times at least attention to other activities. As you retire when you are awakened at the end of meditation, or intentional prayer times are appropriate. The more often it comes into your mind and you feel strongly about desiring to be part of this positive exercise and participation with the Creator within His modus operandi. The greater the contribution you will make, commitment and resolve are the buoyant qualities that hold His desire on the surface of your consciousness so that opportunities for you to participate are attracted to you. Through this process you will indeed be a blessing and focused beam of light in this darkened world. A spotlight spreads into a larger and larger circle at the end of the beam. A greater understanding through your choice to become a part of this project will allow you to spread this light of understanding in the midst of a darkening world. Your inner confidence and the peace of knowing that something powerfully new is already being created as the present reality is changing is a powerful, positive pole. This attitude will attract you to those desiring change and ready to transcend the victim state. You will be the pebble within your own pond of experience. Your service will continue to expand to other levels of experience. Don't plan on a dull and boring life from this point on. Your participation on this project will bring with it personal rewards. Recognize sainthood is not one of them. 
Changes in consciousness will happen as you participate and as your body is able to accommodate them. Those of you who continue to dishonor the living temple of your spirit will miss on some of these rewards. Caffeine, carbonation, a diet of prepared overcooked foods require you to reconsider your priorities. Many of you are without a mate that results in choosing to eat out. Consider your choices and opt for food cooked for shorter periods and include raw foods. If you eat at home, many supermarkets now carry some organic foods. Overeating causes the body to use its energy digesting rather than using it for more productive modes. Smaller amounts of nourishing foods allow the body to use its available energy in other activities and to possibly require shorter sleep periods. Much is being asked of you, but knowing you incarnated here in this lifetime to participate in this project allows you to stop wondering, why me, why here, and why now? This in itself will bring you to change your priorities. As participation in it becomes your priority, those activities that are not important to it will shift out of your life. It is the way it works. Will this take over your life? We would hope not. It is where the action is, and so your life will take it over. A different and energizing perspective. The taking on a personal responsibility and moving within the flow of creation for the purpose of expanding creation. Bring rewards of a personal nature as well as to the larger picture. It's a most enjoyable experience. As you participate, you will remember how it feels to be in balance and harmony. And this will assist you in knowing and making your necessary contributions to the wholeness of the project. To bless is to be blessed, indeed. It is interesting from our perspective to see that you are busily building a reservoir of energy that is standing in stagnation. There is a growing number of people aware of the Paradigm Project, but few if any have sat down to play it, composing what might be called their personal idea of a statement of purpose. It is though you must wait until you meet in some type of formal meeting to accomplish anything. Where is personal responsibility in this response? It would seem to me that bringing your personally defined idea along with you would bring a different level of intent to a meeting to define a purpose. It was hoped that this would be a natural outcome of the suggestions that you begin this process for your own salvation. Do not assume that your ground crew status will be enough. You are in the third dimensional experience and are governed by the same as other inhabitants of planet Earth. If personal responsibility is a keynote, then operate within it, especially with regard to the project if you hope to achieve its purpose. We are finding it difficult from the perspective of our experience to comprehend just how difficult it is for you to experience within the vibrational level of Earth. The combination of planned lowering techniques being applied to all aspects of earthly existence is inevitably lowering the vibration in measurable calibrations. It is the concerted effects of the multiple techniques that are accomplishing this. The critical mass of humans now within the control of these combined techniques will soon be reached. It is important for you to have the understanding that the critical mass point needed for evil intent is different than it is for intent upliftment. This cannot be calculated in simple percentages for the degree of involvement of each soul and its extensions must be considered in this calculation. As the vibratory rate descends, the critical mass point ascends, while the opposite is true from our point of view. Lowering the vibratory rate is much more difficult than raising it. A simple realization can cause a jump in the vibratory rate. So why don't we just trigger a big planetary realization and fix the whole thing? As the vibratory rate lowers, the brain synapses become more and more impaired. Also, the use of sugar substitutes, such as equal, is slowly destroying the ability of the brain to function as they destroy the nerve endings. These can and do cross the blood-brain barrier. Further, low-fat, high-sugar-bearing carbohydrate diets are starving the brain cells. All of this is part of the plan. Remember, they understand functions of the physical body well enough to be able to develop techniques to weaken the connection of the being to a vibratory source in hopes that it can be broken at their moment of choosing. May we stress that you think carefully about this information and that you read your labels and take personal responsibility in the care of your bodily functions necessary to participate in this project. Beyond that which is mentioned in this message and the previous one, the remaining critical factor is the pH level of your body and your blood. If you are serious about wanting to return to the higher dimensional experience, then you are required to master the third dimension, and the completion of this project is recommended as your ticket. 
personal responsibility is being responsible for your personal expression of this life experience, starting with your body temple. To do that now, you need to think independently of what is being touted in your media and by the medical community. Even most alternative professionals are versed in less than holistic understanding and offer only partial assistance with their expensive products. Massage is a pleasant interlude, but is not a replacement for the personal responsibility of regular gentle exercise. Are we lecturing you? What is offered is by way of guidance. If you take it in any other way, then you are reacting to the distorted ego function. Depends on whether you can act rather than intellectualize. The ego has been so distorted so that it loves to pontificate and to excuse so that personal responsibility can be avoided. So much easier to talk than to do when changing established patterns is involved. It can be overcome by ignoring it and placing the focus beyond the chaos of change and instead on visualizing the end result. Pictures bypass the intellectualizing process and are the true language of the brain. In order to come up with a statement of purpose, the parenting groups must spend personal time visualizing or dreaming what each can conceive through imagination, going within the mind of God, and then attempting to put it in the concise wording. The process can begin with words, then mental movies, then words again. This would bring into practice purposeful meditation, a wonderful tool of higher dimensions. I believe it has been referred to as becoming that which you desire. Those known as shamans and oracles use this technique and walk in two worlds. There are nuances of the universal laws that support the intended purpose of experiencing your way back to the source of all. It's an adventure offering challenge and joy far beyond third dimensional physical challenges. These leave the empty feelings that one's feel can only be filled with more challenging experiences that bring the same frustrating results of emptiness. The paths of learning are blocked and mankind on earth is left chasing its non-existent tail and being led in a downward spiral. Continuing in our focus of accepting personal responsibility, it's important to consider another aspect. The ideal of personal responsibility is perceived as being heavy on the responsibility aspect. It would serve humanity better if the accent were on the personal aspect. Again, personal has been distorted to assume the meaning of selfishness, which is translated from the deliberate focus of denying that one can create independence and must take what is needed from someone else. The bankers on your planet illustrate this law of the proposed negative system and carry out this concept to the extreme. This group is not only visualizing their planned result, but is living it now. This increases the available energy required for their plan to move forward. Your Bible has a statement within it to read something like, The rain falls on the just and the unjust. How do you feel about that? Rain refers to the universal laws working within the focus of either polarity. You are programmed to think that negative pole is always bad. Within the context of the whole, this is not true. There is no electricity, energy moving without both poles. It is distorted use beyond the norms of balance that are at issue in this instance. Personal has the true meaning of the harmonious expression of the fragments of creator energy expression radiantly by continuing the flow of expansive energy into whatever dimension it is within. The word was devised within the focus of reference to the fragments as the family of God, per S-O-N, son, all personal. Again, the masculine reference because it is within the perception of expansiveness being a masculine aspect. In other words, personal responsibility exemplifies the willingness to be a flow of expansive energy within the realm of your pattern of experience. With the cycle of energy surrounding you moving in opposite directional flow, you must swim upstreams, so to speak, to accomplish what you intend. Hopefully these messages will provide a convenient rock on which you can stand above the flow in order to get your equilibrium, gain strength to resolve, and then start to gather the rocks necessary to build a dam, divert the flow in a new direction. Yours is a holy project reflecting the holistic nature of how it all works. Within your sequential focus, it must come together piece by piece, but it may not in true reality work that way. This is why it is so important that you trust the process, especially when you think things are not working as they should be. Just do your part and all will come into place. Trust. Let us continue with these messages for a few more sessions. These pertain to the parenting phase of the Project New Paradigm. 
the ball then is in your court for action. Either you pick up the ball and move into actually doing the conception of the babe or not. Certainly, we have been making every effort to encourage your participation. If it's necessary for the pebble to be dropped at the next level, you're going to have an interesting ride on the spaceship Earth. This is a further wake-up call. The snooze bar is reaching the end of the program. If you're reading this information or hearing it, you are part of the ground crew and need only to realize it is time to drop your disguise and begin your mission. The flight crew cannot land until the field is ready and the invitation is issued. As suggested before, begin formulating and dreaming scenarios within your own personal awareness. This triggers the residence of the law of attraction. In the beginning there was thought and the thought became flesh. It's a matter of bringing the information shared previously into cohesive understanding that allows you to operate within the appropriate process. Since the paradigm can only be brought forth with a holographic format that resonates in the harmony with the wholeness of creation, it would seem logical that you understand the basic parameters required to ensure success. Since it involves feeding this information to you in bits that can be pondered and assimilated, it ends up spread over many pages. You are then left to combine the bits into composite that formulates a sensible basis for your moving into the creative process with confidence. It will be necessary for you to assume the study mode and reread and re-listen to these lessons in order to bring forth your own understanding and to formulate your personal foundations. There are nuances of the laws that will blossom into your awareness through the study assimilation process. It would be convenient for you if we would simply provide you with an outline, but that would not allow the flowering process to be reached as an end result. It's nice to receive a bouquet and simply enjoy the beauty and the fragrance, but the growth process would be skipped. This is necessary that you grow your understanding. The handbook for the new paradigm is a precious treasure given to you so that you may step into your radiant stance of service and fulfill your chosen destiny in the history of planet Earth. Through this suggested process, the burden of responsibility will transcend into pure joy of bringing enlightenment to the world of darkness. Within the holographic process is the element of maintaining the focus to enable manifestation to complete its intended cycle. The focus of thought is maintained for long periods of time, again staying with the reckoning mode, by setting the vibratory oscillations within a range that emanates sound. This is duplicated in a crude form by your music. In purity, it can be grasped as being of crystalline bell-like quality. Tibetan bells give you an inkling of the reverberations that continue for a long period of time, beyond what the human ear can hear. Within a holographic context, a continuous vibration is set forth in an over-unity mode carrying forth the expansive paradigm. Each holographic creation is unique, reminiscent of your snowflakes. There is present within each galaxy a continuous melody of bell-like sounds which is perceived in part by some and referred to as the music of the spheres, which is the perfect description. Earth at the moment is quite out of tune. Contemplate the resonance of the crystalline music of the spheres and then think of punk rock. That might be thought as the resonant sound of the planned new galaxy. Would you like to live there all the time? Perfect resonance is attained through balance. This is the reason that rock music is so destructive to the balance of the young people. It's designed to be unbalanced and discordant in its basic construction. It reflects outward the inner imbalance of its composers and it enhances chaotic tendencies within the psyche of those spending long and frequent time listening to it. The bridge for this phase from romantic sexually stimulating music was the Beatles. Their early music contained melodies with a lesser amount of distortion as it is demonstrated by the orchestra versions. It did, however, open up the door for the more destructive distortions that inevitably followed. Again, all part of the plan to slow and hold down the human vibration. In order for you to conceptualize a higher dimensional experience, it is necessary that you have some understanding of the experience of it from the creational perspective. Holographic interaction is basic to this understanding. Current methodology to produce a phenomenon involves a beam of light focused through a transparency that produces a floating dimensional replica. In an existing holograph, you conceive a thought of a desire to be reproduced in a holographic mode. This thought thinking, you, focuses by enlarging this thought with details that further define the holographic desire and increases the energy of the beam-like thought with the emotions of what the experience of enjoying this new holograph will be like before empowering it to come into form. 
you call the holographic concept 3D or third dimensional. How then is the fourth dimension different? 3D encompasses the concept of height, width, and depth, but involves no motion within the holograph of its own volition. 3D movies involve dimensional glasses. Virtual reality is also a manipulation. The next step in the fourth dimensional experience superimposes the living or vibratory dimension of action within the purview of the holograph itself. A true holograph is projected through thought, not by mechanism. Since thought has the power to act upon itself with further thought, it is self-aware. A higher degree of self-awareness implies a higher vibratory rate or dimension of experience. The seeds of one dimension are planted within the lesser one. This brings you to the understanding that you are already aware of being self-aware. However, this seed must be nurtured and cultivated in order to flower into transcending to a point of outgrowing its present placement through increasing its vibratory rate until it lifts itself into a dimensional shift allowing for greater opportunity to grow even more self-aware. What you are attempting to do is to cause this process to manifest on a planetary scale because Earth's vibratory environment is so distorted that individuals can no longer accomplish it. Just as Moses had to cross the Red Sea at the exact moment of a planetary shift, this is the time at the exact moment of a galactic shift. How will you know? That's our job. As usual, you are being reminded that unless you create a plug and pull it, some other backup plan will be employed that will bypass the opportunity for humanity to clean up their own act and will use it as a stepping stone for advancement. We continue to stress the power that you hold in the palm of your hands. It's such a gift to be in a position assisting this planet and its inhabitants into a shift of such major proportion, and it carries with it an opportunity for literally jumping up the vibratory scale. We can only bring the opportunity to your attention and act in its advisory capacity. You must be the ones to do it. It is not the first time you have participated in similar roles. This is a mission you have literally trained yourself to be part of. So don't drop the ball now. There's nothing more important in your current realm of experience.